What a great time to be a Giant, be a fan of the Giants. But we have something going here. We're building something special, and you know you can see it from the outside and inside. It's even more beautiful. Reflecting on everything that got me here, just to see that uniform, and you know I, I watched. That's the team I watched the most growing up. My dad was a Giants fan, so once a Giant, always a Giant. For me, it's only a Giant. Welcome everybody to a special edition of All In with Art Stapleton, a New York Giants podcast brought to you by NorthJersey.com and The Record. I'm your host, Art Stapleton, and there's one word to define today, devastating. The New York Giants found a way to lose, 28 seconds away from pulling off the biggest win of the season, beating the Jets with Tommy DeVito at quarterback, not attempting a pass in the second half. With Saquon Barkley carrying the load after Tyrod Taylor was injured in the first half. Kayvon Thibodeau's third sack of the game. Just over a minute to go. Of Zach Wilson. Gives the ball back on a turnover or downs. The Giants take over in their own territory. And what happens? A miracle for the New York Jets happens. You got to give Zach Wilson credit for making the plays when it counted, but it should have never happened. The Giants had a 99.7% chance to win, according to ESPN Analytics, in that spot when they lined up for fourth and one. There's going to be debate over Brian Dable and whether or not he should have kicked the field goal or he should have given the ball to Saquon Barkley on a fourth and one. Guess what? Analytics says it didn't matter it was the same percentage to win 99.7 it was a 0.3 chance for the Jets to win regardless of what the Giants did and they send out Graham Gano Graham Gano misses his second field goal of the game the Jets come right back no timeouts 28 seconds left on the clock. Actually, it was 24 seconds because of the four seconds that ticked off after the missed field goal. And Zach Wilson with back-to-back 29-yard completions to Alan Lazard and to Garrett Wilson. They hustled to the line. Now, I still don't know how they were able to spike the ball in that time frame. You look at what the Giants couldn't do at the end of the first half in Buffalo two weeks ago, yet somehow the Jets are able to spike it with one second left on the clock. Greg Zerline comes on, kicks the field goal, ties the game at 10. They go into overtime. The Giants receive, can't really do much in that spot, and then the Jets end up getting a pass interference bailout. Zach Wilson on third and five throws the ball up to a receiver, not even his top receivers. A guy was called up from the practice squad. And Adoree Jackson commits DPI. The Jets then have a an easy chip shot field goal for Greg Zerline to win the game. The Giants lose 13-10. Now, there are so many different ways you can go in. Let's start with the head coach. I can tell you that the Giants' game plan coming into this game was get a lead, And then play to the defense. Because they believed that unless the Jets were going to force feed Brees Hall, which they did not do, which is inconceivable to begin with, that Brees Hall at one point only had nine carries in this game. After what he did on that catch and run with a 50-yard touchdown for the Jets. But they believed that Zach Wilson could not beat them. That their defensive front could not be stopped. And you know what? They were right. So when Tyrod Taylor gets hurt, Tommy DeVito comes in. The Giants were going to run the game through 26, which is what Dable told them at halftime. And you know what? Saquon Barkley put this team on his shoulders and was tremendous in the second half. 128 yards, a career-high 36 carries. And when you consider four years ago against the Jets, Saquon Barkley had one yard rushing to do what he did in that second half was really, I mean, we'd be talking about back to being, you know, Superman for Barkley for this week. And it just didn't happen. So Dable decided at that point 
You're fourth and one. You know, look, he's damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. And that's the reality. We can argue all we want, and we want to blame Brian Dable for doing what he did. Like I said, the percentages were what they were. And he chose to send out his field goal kicker, who coming into this season was 91.7, I believe, accuracy for his career. Now, granted, as I reported on Sunday morning, and I told you on our pregame podcast, Graham Gano has a left knee injury. He has swelling in his knee. He's going to eventually need surgery. He's hoping after the season. So he's receiving treatment during the week. He's not 100% healthy. Now, is it the reason why he missed two kicks on Sunday? It's hard to say if he's compensating for his left knee. Last week when he missed a kick against Washington, that was the wind. He struck the ball well, and the, the swirling winds knocked the ball to the right. So... You still put your faith in Graham Gano in that spot. It's a chip shot field goal. The Giants take the field goal attempt, and they miss it. Gano pushes it wide right. Yet still, the Jets had to drive in 24 seconds with no timeouts into field goal range. The Giants' defense allowed it to happen. That's frustrating. Because, like I said, for all but 28 seconds or 24 seconds in this game, the Giants' defense was outstanding. But it didn't happen. The thinking behind not running Saquon Barkley is that you're not thinking about having the, have, giving up a field goal to go to overtime. In that spot, you're thinking about kicking the field goal, making it a six-point game, then Graham Gano kicks a touchback, which he had done all game long. In that situation... Now you're going to have to go 75 yards in 24 seconds with no timeouts just to tie the game with a touchdown. You take the field goal out of the equation. Unfortunately, Gano misses the field goal. And when you're a bad team and you're scuffling and trying to fight your way back into this season, you can't have plays like that. And you did. And I give Gano credit after the game. He refused to use his left knee injury as anything to do with why he missed the two kicks today. He said he did not strike the ball well. He told me on Thursday that he, he has struck the ball well this season. So take that out of the equation for now. But you have to wonder if it's really affecting Graham and the way he's kicking. And it's unfortunate because the guy's a stand-up guy and he has one job to do. And unfortunately... Um, you know, he's going to be held accountable, and I'm sure he's held accountable by himself more than he's held accountable by anybody else. Um, But that being said, let's go to the quarterback situation. Now, Tyrod Taylor, just give him well wishes at this point. He's still in Hackensack University Medical Center, undergoing tests and evaluation. He will stay overnight. This is what the Giants said. He has a rib cage injury. Obviously, you worry about internally, anything internal. Um, So his status right now is up in the air. Tommy DeVito comes into the game, and I know there are a lot of questions as to why Tommy DeVito didn't throw the ball around. Look, the reality is this. The Giants were betting on the idea that the only way the Jets could get back in this game and win the game was if their defense could make a play. And the Giants were not going to give this defense an opportunity to make a play against an undrafted rookie quarterback who split carries on the scout team this week with Daniel Jones. You know, that came out over the weekend that Daniel Jones took a lot of snaps on scout team this week trying to get him ready. Well, guess what? That takes away from Tommy DeVito and his snaps in a game. You know, the Giants did what they had to do in terms of protecting DeVito, protecting this offense, riding Saquon Barkley, and forcing Zach Wilson to beat them. And Zach Wilson beat them. They beat themselves first, but Zach Wilson made two huge plays, and then he made the throw on the decision to try to get a pass interference penalty, and they got one against Adoree Jackson. And that's how they lost the game. So where do the Giants go on quarterback? Go to quarterback from here? I don't know how you can go to Tommy DeVito to start this week. 
Um, I guess you could make the argument that if he gets a full week of practice and you cater a game plan around him, then maybe you can make DeVito more successful. I mean, let's not forget, it was raining all game. You know, just the circumstances were not there, and it's not creating an excuse for the Giants. You could certainly make the case and say, why did they have Tommy DeVito in that situation? But the reality is that they probably would have played very similarly if they had Tyrod Taylor under under center. Because that was how the Giants knew they had to play the game today. They were going to ride Barkley if they got a lead. That's what they were going to do. They got the lead on the zone read by DeVito's run. All the eyes were on Saquon Barkley. Tommy DeVito scores. Giants go up 10-7. And then all of a sudden, it's you have to do whatever you got to do to be able to keep this game in your defense's hands. And... Up until 24 seconds left on the clock, they did that. And unfortunately, when you're a bad team, you find ways to allow another team to make plays. I mean, this stuff after the game about Robert Sala being asked about Woody Johnson feeling like the king of New York. I mean, I know that wasn't a direct quote, but I mean, if you're the Jets, you're happy to escape here. You're not apologizing for anything. You win the game 13-10, you're 4-3, good for you. But this is not one to take cartwheels, uh, you know, to to take bows and and do cartwheels after. I mean, the Giants neutralized the Jets' defense for most of the game by playing conservatively, running Barkley, and not taking chances that were going to put them in position where they needed to take risks. And that's what they did. And now at 2-6, and six, with the trade deadline coming up on Tuesday, uh, I know Daniel Jones still is not cleared for contact. There is a possibility that he gets cleared this week. We'll see. But I got to imagine that the Giants turn to Matt Barkley or Ian Book, two guys that they had in for free agent visits a couple weeks ago, to see if that's an opportunity this week. Obviously, you hope that maybe it's just a precaution. Tyrod Taylor is in the hospital overnight, and he comes out on Monday and is cleared and feels better, uh, and it's just a matter of pain tolerance with rib cage injury. I'm not sure how you can think that, but I certainly, I guess that's a possibility. But there are a lot of things the Giants have to figure out with the trade deadline on 4 o'clock on Halloween. You know, do they look to trade guys? The The bigger question is, are there teams that actually want guys on this team? Now, I don't believe they're going to trade Saquon Barkley. They basically went public with that. Uh, it'd be very foolish, and it'd be an about-face publicly to do that. So unless a team is going to give you a first-round pick that you can justify getting rid of Barkley, I'm not sure you can do that. But as far as Leonard Williams goes or Dory Jackson, how badly do you want to sell those guys off for peanuts, essentially, just to get their salary off the books for the remainder of the season. Um, You know, you're at a risk right now. This defense was incredible today, for the most part, doing what they've done for three weeks in a row now. It comes a time where you have to wonder how much more they can give. And I know they're professionals, and I know you expect them to continue to give big-time effort. But when a game like this happens and you look at how it went down, this is the professional – this is professional football. This is NFL, but this is also human element here. And this team was devastated after the game. And I think what the Giants have to keep in mind here is that you know, right now, according to Tankathon, they're picking third overall. And that is something that is undeniable for this team moving forward. At two and six, there are some winnable games left on the schedule, but winnable how? And winnable with what? There's a lot of blame going around. Again, I think some of it is misplaced. I will say it for the last time tonight on this show and then I will say it I'm sure all week 
was a 99.7% chance at winning, according to ESPN Analytics, whether the Giants kicked the field goal or whether they went for it on fourth and one. Brian Dable made the choice to go with his veteran kicker. The veteran kicker who is saying that he's not injured, who took every kick this week in practice. We know Graham Gano is injured. We know his left knee is likely going to have to get scoped after the season. But the reality is, whichever way Dable went, and if the Giants failed, he was going to get second-guessed. What the numbers say is that he could go either way. They just had to execute. And the Giants didn't execute. They left the door open, and then they didn't execute in pass coverage against Zach Wilson. They gave up two 29-yard catches. Then they give up that field goal with one second left. And then once overtime hit, it was going to be very difficult for this offense to generate anything with the Jets having all the momentum. And we saw that's how it happened. It's a bitter pill to swallow for Giants fans, no doubt about it. Jets have now won three games in a row in this series, going back to Christmas Eve 2011. And the Giants have to figure out where they go from here this season. A lot of questions to be answered. There are some things that you hang your hat on and say that's how good some of these guys are playing. Dexter Lawrence was dominant. Kayvon Thibodeau, boy, talk about answering the bell. But the reality is when you lose a game like this, there are no bouquets. There are no moral victories in this situation. The Giants have a lot of them. And unfortunately, the reality is they are now 2-6 and six with one of the worst losses that I've seen since I've been on a beat. And that says a lot because I've seen a lot of bad losses for this Giants franchise since 2011. And this one is right near the top. Thanks for being all in. We'll always be all in, and we'll catch you this week.